we go. 80,000 miles, three years. Rather shaky, I know. So what's it been like? Three years and 80,000 miles with a Ford Focus. Let's see. So externally, I still think it's a good looking car. It's got a nice aggressive look to the front, which to be fair, the newer one actually doesn't have. I prefer the shape of this one. I think the new Focus, the replacement for this, the, the, the front, the face almost looks like someone's just shoved something up its backside. It's got that sort of, ooh, surprised look about it. Just my opinion. But it's not a bad looking car. It's not particularly clean at the moment. It is a working vehicle. Have a wander around it. And the other side is much the same as the, the previous side. Now, I've watched enough episodes of Top Gear over the years to know one thing everybody needs to see is the engine and there is an engine fantastic at the back looks like an estate car again I actually prefer it to the, the current one Decent sized boot, not that you can really see at the moment, but for this class of car, it's perfectly good. One little downside is not being posh. I have to shut my own boot. No buttons to press here. So externally, I quite like it. Internally, it's fine. The back seat's plenty big enough for a toolbox and some water. Magazines fit in the back. And you can put a coat on the rear seat. Door pockets are big enough for stuff. Glove boxes, well, big enough for gloves. And you can't shut them again. You have a little storage bin there where you can take out this. And in there you've got a Another USB slot and a 12 volt port. Adjustable bits there for cup holders or pens and torches. So on the whole, it's not a bad car. So what's it like to drive? Actually, it's pretty good. Now I know those of you that, that may know me and my history of company vehicles um, may want to sit down for this, but I really like it. I find the Persia I had before this was the single worst vehicle I have ever driven in my life. It was positively hateful in every respect. The Astras I had for 20 odd years, the Mark 3s, Mark 4s, Mark 2s, they were great cars. I didn't like the Mark 5s or the Mark 6. Um, I've not had a Mark 7, so I can't comment on that. But this Focus, I've no idea which generation it is, third, fourth, fifth, whatever. After 80,000 miles in three years, I still really actually like it. It's nice to drive, it's comfy, it's reasonably quick, you know, it's never going to set the world on fire, but it does what it needs to. The sound system is, is okay, although that is a tweeter from that door, which has blown, but there I do like my music very loud so I can't necessarily completely blame the car for that.
gearbox is nice. Ratios. I'd probably find myself having to change down to a lower gear than I'd normally like to or be used to. Um, so you ultimately you end up changing gear perhaps more than you should. So the ratios aren't possibly the best suited for this engine. But the actual gear change itself, this is a lovely box. Uh, six speed box, and it, it's very nice. The clutch, it, it's a reasonably progressive clutch. The only issues I have are right at the top of the pedal, there's about an inch of free movement before the pedal is actually under any tension. And that's not just the, the clutch travel, that is just free movement before you get to the clutch travel because you've then got. Uh, approximately another inch, inch and a half um, on the pedal travel that you can actually feel some pressure before the, the clutch, before the pressure plates themselves are actually doing anything. That means the clutch pedal sits about an inch higher than the rest of the pedals, which probably isn't a major issue apart from the fact that, I don't know, you just feel you're having to bend your clutch foot the angle a bit more than, than the other pedals. Minor thing. Um, I've stated before I have this OCD issue on this door. Um, I'll show you a, a better clip here. I don't know if you can see this, but it's this bit here that annoys me. Because the dash swoops round and it looks like it should swoop round there, but it doesn't, it goes back to there. Annoying. Back from past me to now me. The pedals themselves are reasonably nicely spaced. The clutch and the sorry, the um brake and the accelerator uh, are enough of a distance away where my size 11 flippers aren't constantly hitting two pedals at once and all the rest of it like I did with the, the Bergeo or the Spring Bridge and I've got last. But they are also close enough together uh, where good heel and towing is possible and comfortable. So we have a reasonable pick up there it, it does bog down ever so slightly just as you launch uh, which isn't necessarily ideal uh, you have perhaps just have to to rev it a little more than you would expect um, like, like a lot of these modern diesels there is absolutely nothing happening until the turbo's on so there is no low down torque whatsoever the old diesels were brilliant they were like a Almost like an American V8 where you just have your headlights on full beam, it's fine. Uh, where you had all that low down grunt. These have nothing below 2,500 RPM, there's nothing there. You have to have the turbo spooled up for the engine really to do anything. Uh, and that's the big problem, I think, with the engine bogging down when you try and pull away. You, unless you pull away very, very gently. You need to have the revs up so the turbo's on top. But uh, I, again, as I said, while I'm quibbling over things like this, you have to argue it's actually not a bad car. I'm just pottering around town at the moment, and everything's going quite well. This start stop thing takes a bit of getting used to, having never had a car before that did it, but it's actually quite a nice thing once you get used to it. Traffic lights, however, I will never get used to. It's the bane of my life. Especially if I'm in Norwich. I think they must have had a, a good deal on traffic lights and bought every one they could find. These ones appear to prefer red. Oh, that side's going. I'm not. It's a 
But anyway, I'll come back to you when I'm on a slightly more interesting road. Well, aren't dual carriageways wonderful? Speed up Britain. Two lanes, traffic can move freely at, at, at five miles an hour. It's only 65 miles an hour lower than its current speed limit on this road. Five miles an hour. Fantastic. So, uh, I will get you onto a more interesting road, but uh, it might take some time. What you may be able to hear, though, One issue I do have with with this car, although it's not really down to the car. I say that because it was fine until the people that serviced the vehicle, um, I won't name them, but they're a tire and exhaust outfit that fix things quickly. From the moment they've touched the brakes, when they warm up, they squeak and squeal like hell to the point where pedestrians actually jump. It's quite amusing. Initially, I thought, oh well, okay, perhaps I didn't clean the calipers properly because they're these weird ass floating things. But the next set of brake pads were the same, and the set after that have been the same. Coincidentally, the person that works my opposite shifts. He's got a slightly newer focus than me, just because of the way the cars alternate, but uh, he's just had his first replacement set of brake pads and his car has started squealing. Uh, now I can't put this down to the car because it was fine up until said tyre outlets changed the brake pads. I can only put it down to them using cheap ass brake pads with a high iron or whatever metal content but as it warms up obviously the metal expands and it squeals against the discs um, it's due for a service again in a few weeks so I will have another dig at them and I'm sure it will be fine for a fortnight maybe a month a little bit of wear on the pads and it will start again same as it has done for the last few years but, uh, but yeah, so that's not really a car issue, that's just a, ooh, um, but that's just probably more down to the, the um, outfit we have to have service our cars. Obviously it's a company car, I have no say in where it goes. But, uh, but anyway, once I get out of these, these hold-ups, oh, we're up to, up to 10 mile an hour slowing down again. Uh, once I get out of these hold-ups, uh, hopefully I will see you sometime in the future on a more interesting road. So as I've said before, it, it's quite a nice driving position, quite comfy. Got a few little twists and turns here and uh, the steering is, is reasonably nicely weighted. Uh, it's got quite a nice feel to it despite being electronic power steering which generally I dislike. Uh, this one has actually got quite a nice feel to it, the car's reasonably well balanced. But you can tell it's quite tight. Side walls, um, certainly I think this suspension setup really would benefit from slightly lower profile tyres. size family hatchback it does handle very well the steering is nice and precise the pedals are nicely um, spaced the seat is supportive enough Suspension, 
perhaps touched on the firm side. Um, although that said, I have got the tyre pressures in this one set for a fully loaded car, uh, but because this usually is fully loaded at the moment, it's not, but that will be very good. So, what else is to say really? It drives reasonably nicely, it handles reasonably well, handles nicely spaced, the steering is nice. Reasonable amount of storage, which is something that's severely lacking in a lot of long cars. It does what it says to tell it's a good, honest car. If you want one of these in the used market, I have no real reason to try and keep it open. Um, I am quite happy with the car. I could probably go on for another six months to a year. And I can't say as I'm disappointed. In all honesty, come replacement time, the company I work for turns around and says, I'm either going to have another Virgo or Renault or something. Um, I will ask the dealerships until they get more focus in it. It's rather attractive. Um, so, yeah, conclusions. If you want one, buy one. There's no reason why not to. As we go over this bridge, down the other side, I shall leave it there. As I say, if you like my videos, subscribe, like the video, the little box that comes up to me. Technical girlfriend. And uh, look forward to seeing more of my deranged ramblings in another video. Take care. See you soon.